I'll ask that again. Y'all ready to have church? Yeah. chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, if you'll stand for the reading of the word, if you uh, can't because of physical ailments, we understand, so remain seated, we'll pray for you, get you healed. Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, we're going to go to verse 48. Luke chapter 2, verse 48. If you have it, say amen. 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 And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou done this? Done thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we ask that you just have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts, in our minds, oh God. We thank you in advance for all that you're going to do, and we say yes, Lord, to whatever you have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Now, I know that many of you are very familiar with the Scripture, and in this portion of Scripture, Jesus is 12 years old. His family had traveled to Jerusalem for Passover. And as Passover finishes, they leave. They go a day's journey, and Jesus stays behind. And so Jesus, again, he's 12 years old. Or he 12 years old? Right, somebody might be getting spanked if they stayed behind on purpose at 12 years old. But not Jesus. Jesus stays in the temple and when they go looking for him, it says, the Bible says that, that they, they go a day's journey and they start looking amongst their kinfolk and amongst their acquaintances to see if who he with because they thought he was with friends or family. And they didn't find him, so they re return back to Jerusalem and they find him sitting with doctors and scholars asking questions. And verse 49 says, that he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Didn't you know that I must be about my father's business? And one thing that I want to point out right there, and right away the Lord will speak. He said, I must be about. It wasn't a choice. He said, I have to be about it. You ever, ever heard somebody say, well, don't talk about it, be about it? No. Don't talk about it. Be about it. And what that's simply saying is, don't just say that you're going to do something. Don't just profess that you're going to do something. But actually put some action to your words and do something about it. And Jesus said, I must be about my Father's business. And this morning, I'll be preaching my Father's business. If you haven't figured it out yet. But here's the thing is, if you, if you told somebody that I must be about my Father's business in the natural then they would be like, if they didn't know you or didn't know your father, they'd be like, hmm, I wonder what his father's business is. Let's see what he's doing. And maybe I can figure out what his father's business is. Right? So if somebody, if, if, if a son, any son in here would, would say, I'm about my father's business, whatever your father does, then they would know, okay, well, you must be doing this because your father does this. Does that make sense? So you, if you're going to be about your father's business. Now, here's the thing is, is Mary comes and says, hey, me and your father have been looking for you. And we're sorrowful. We're grieved. You left. You stayed behind. And, and, and he said, I, but I must be about my father's business. Well, here's the thing is, is there's a separation between fathership here because Jesus is not in the temple building a chair or doing some kind of type of comp carpentry. So he's not talking about a physical father, amen? And we all know that from, from, from context and from what he's saying. But it even says in the scripture that, that in verse 50 that they, under, they didn't even understand what he said because he said, I was about my father's business. And she had just said, my father and I have been looking for you. Nevertheless, once 
Once you look at somebody, if they say they're about their father's business, it has to give you a clue of what the father's business is, and it says they were confused. Now turn with me in the Word of God. I want to show you something to John chapter 31. No, I'll pick it back this time. John, John chapter 8. I believe it's John chapter 8. Yes, it is. John chapter 8, verse 31. Now, I'm going to read a good portion of Scripture, so if you neglected your word once again, I will help you out this, this morning to get some reading in. John chapter 8, and verse 31 says, And then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on Him, If you continue in My word, then you are My disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now, here's, here's, where, here's where I want to talk to you about they answered him and said, We be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou that you shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, Very, very, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. And if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Say amen. 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 And, and know that you, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. Because of my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen of my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. And they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said to him, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you truth, which I have heard of God. This is not Abraham. Do you the deeds, I'm sorry, you, you do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we, not born, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. And Jesus said unto him, them, if God were your father, you would have loved me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came of myself, but he that sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because I cannot hear my, even because you cannot hear my words, you are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and, the, and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. And he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. See, church today, um, there are many people today that claim that God is their father like these people here. These people here claim that God is their father. These people claim, here claim to be believers, right? And so many people in church today, they claim to be believers and they claim and profess and they said it with their mouth, but the word of God said their hearts are far from me. And this word this morning is... is, is is a heavy word, but I, I want you to understand that, that God is wanting to us to look in the mirror of the Word of God. The Bible refers to the Word of God as a mirror, looking at yourself through it. And that you can compare yourself, even, even the preparation of the Lord's Supper, Satan, to examine oneself and to make sure. And, 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 and this morning and last night, the Lord made me examine me. And every time I preach a word, trust me, he comes to me and goes, hold on, time out. Don't apply it to your church yet. I'm talking to you, son. And I got to take a deep breath and examine and look in the mirror. And he begins to point out my flaws and my failures. And he begins to deal with me on them. And I have to hit my knees when he shows me where I've come short. Make no mistake about it, church. The Lord deals with me often. But in verse 33... He comes to these people and, and he begins to speak to them and telling them how they can, how can, if they just know the truth, they can be made free. How many want to be free this morning? 
right? And sometimes, sometimes we say that we want to be free, but and, and the Lord opens the door and He shows us how to be free. And he shows us this is what you can do, and, and this is you just lay this down and, and lay this down and and, and 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 forgive that person and forgive this person, and we're like, no, I want to hold on to that, and we choose not to be free. We choose to be bound. We choose to keep our chains. We choose to have some kind of bondage. Because it's our choice. It's what we want. And these people, they point, they point to Abraham, insinuating that they believe in the God of Abraham. So, so many people will just start to point at, you know, their religion. Well, I believe, you know, I go to church and I believe and I, I, you know, I read my Bible. I believe. And you, you know the devil knows the Bible probably better than all of us. Just because you know word doesn't mean you live it. Amen. Amen. And but but people when, when he begins to talk to them about about hey if you were really of God your Father you would do His will you wouldn't be seeking to harm me or to kill me. But then he starts to tell them. He starts to tell them you're of your father the devil. Now, if you're a Christian this morning, God is your father. And you should be about your father's business. Right? You should be about what he, what he wants you to be about. You should be uh, carrying the, the burden of, of souls. You should be about wanting to be a witness and wanting to testify. You should be about these things. But many times... More times than not, we're about our own business. Come on. Let me, let me, let me, let me. He said to me, I'm about my father's business. So I got a question for you this morning, church, and it's, it's kind of abrupt and right in your face, but whose business are you really about this morning? Are you about your business or are you about your father's business? There's a difference, Right? Sometimes we get that a little bit confused. There's a difference though. Let me give you an example. Peter and his brother Andrew were fishermen. Right? Jesus comes walking by and he says to them, and then he also sees uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, all fishermen. And he says, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Right? And Jesus said, follow me, and immediately they left. What were they doing? See, they, they, they left what was important to them. They left what was important probably to their family. They left what was important to the people that are around them, what people expected of them. Can you imagine? I remember I'm watching, uh, every once in a while, I love that, that show, The Chosen. And there was one scene, and it, obviously they embellished on it, but there was one scene where Peter goes to his wife and he's like, uh, I know I've been a fisherman for a long time, but uh, I'm going to follow a preacher. And he's afraid she's going to freak out. He's afraid that she's going to, like, what are you talking about? we got to pay bills, you know, or whatever. But she's excited about it. Can you imagine having to go to your family or the people that expect certain things around you and say, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to be about my father's business, not my other father's business. And, she, and, and, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they worked on the boat. They said when, when Jesus found them, they were fixing the nets of their father in their father's boat. They were about their father's business and they walked away from it all to do what he wanted. I want to reiterate because I can't put enough weight on it this morning. See, it's probably something. I, I like fishing. How many like fishing? <laughs> I'm uh, looking at the Nahara I'm like, come on. I better raise my hand. These people can catch more, almost more fish than Jesus. They go fishing and they come back with buckets and it's ice. And anyway, cry regrets. But he, he, he called fishermen and said, I will make you fishers of men. It sounds the same. It sounds real similar. But it's not. Amen? Amen? See, it's, it's, and the thing about it is, I want you to notice that, that fishing is not, not a, a deceitful thing to do. Right? They weren't dancing on a pole. Or, I mean, 
But it, it was an honorable profession. They're fishing. They love the fish. I, I might struggle if God, you know, I'm on the, on the lake fishing. And like God was like, follow me. I'm like, but I'm fishing. I finally got a vacation. No. But this was their job. They wanted to go fishing. They, they were fishing and, they, and it was an honorable profession. So they weren't doing something evil. Many times when the Lord calls us, we do liken it to walking away from sin and walking away from the, the bad things in our lives, and we should, but sometimes He's just asking you to do His will and not your own. He's asking you to be about your father's business and not your own business. See, their father's business was fishing again. It wasn't an evil thing. And your business, I'm not saying it's an evil thing, but is it your father's business? Is it what God's calling you to focus on at this moment? Is it what God's calling you to surrender, submit to, be uh, humble to? Is it what God's calling you? Is that your business? What, what takes precedence? Your business or your father's business? This morning. And I'm, I'm not speaking against businesses. Right? You can honor God in business. But you got to make sure you're in his will and not your own. You got to make sure you stay under his shadow and not step out on your own and try to create a shadow for everybody else. Amen. Because there's a lot of people trying to cast shadows of their own, trying to be seen instead of let the Lord be seen. Amen. Amen. But the Lord said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. That's the Lord's business. Being a fisherman was their other father's business. And it's so close, church. I know there's a big difference, right? But it's so close in the scripture. Some people, some people get it, get it, get it confused in their head. What, what is their business? And what's their father's business? It sounds similar, but it isn't. And sometimes it looks similar, but it isn't. Here's the thing, church. Let, let me give you. Let, let me let me tell you this. See, God, the Lord told us to spread the gospel, right? The same thing he was telling us, those, those disciples, to spread the gospel, to be fishers of men, right? And if we do his business, we will be fishers of men. We'll do that with love, with, with unconditional love. We'll show the heart of God, we'll be his hands, and we'll be his feet, right? But when, 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 when we let our business taint it, we use the word as a weapon. Anybody ever done that? Don't, don't raise your hand. <laughs> but ever, anybody ever use the word as a weapon? Like, maybe your spouse. Anyway, I won't go there. But, 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 see, we can use God's business and taint it just enough. Let me give an example. Uh, when, when Jesus came on, 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 on Palm Sunday, he's coming into the city, and all the city and all the disciples are saying, Hosanna, right? And the, the priests are in the temple praying for the Messiah, and they come out and they say, Jesus, tell your followers to shut up. They thought they were about the Father's business, but they weren't. It was tainted. It was tainted with religion. It was tainted with what they wanted. It was tainted with their own ideas here. Y'all see what the difference is. See, see, God can call us to be fishers of men, but if we use the word as a weapon, then all of a sudden we're harpooning people. It's not real nice. I've been there. When I first got saved, I was so zealous. I've, I've said this before. I burned people with lighters just to show them what hell felt like. <laughs> like I was going to win people to God that way. They thought I was nuts. Well, it's a little bit. Right? So I was harpooning people out there, trying to be a fisher's of men. I was, you know, I wasn't, you know, kindly and all oh, come here and gathering people unto the Lord. I wasn't doing that. And sometimes our, our, our antics, and sometimes our business taints the Lord's business and we get it wrong. We're off. Right? And let, let, let me let you know a little secret. If you got your feelings hurt because it didn't turn out the way you wanted, sounds like it's your business. Because 
It's, it's, if the Lord says it's my battle and it's his business and you did what you're supposed to do, why would we get offended? Amen. A lion don't need to be defended. He just let them out of the cage and he can defend himself, you know. But a lion don't need to be defended. That's like me standing in front of a big old lion, don't touch my kitty. What? <laughs> I'm offended because you don't like my kitty. What? All right, you keep talking about that cat, and you keep antagonizing me, going to eat you. I just stepped out of the way. It's not my business. I don't. I don't need to get offended for the Lord's what the Lord is doing or not doing because these people didn't get what they deserved or they did get what they deserved. It's it's He's sovereign, not me. So I put it all in his hands and, and I want to make sure and I, the Lord's speaking to you this morning to make sure that you don't take his business with your business. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not your business. <laughs> it's his business, church. It's his business. Amen. Are you about your father's business or are you about your own business? Right now, now some of that is, is, is evident. Like right back in the day before I found Christ, was definitely about my own business. I did my own things, said my own thoughts, had my own things. You know, didn't have anything to do with God. But when I gave my, God, my life to God, I thought I was about his business, but I was tainting it with my business. He don't need help, that, that kind of help. See, when my wife spoke about the foundations this morning, again, we, we didn't talk about what we're going to say. Uh, and, and so, many, 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 many times, what we end up doing is, 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 is we, we want to do the Lord's business. Our hearts right, our spirits right, our intentions are right. But sometimes, if we'll just admit it, we allow our stuff to taint the things of God, right? And one of the, the hardest things to do as a man or a woman of God is to go, Lord, I don't want to mess this up. I want to make sure that you're seen. I want to make sure that you're shown. I don't want to prove myself right. I just want to present your word. I just want to, to present the gospel. I just want to do your will. And it doesn't matter if I look funny. It doesn't matter if I look stupid. It doesn't matter if I'm humiliated. It doesn't matter if they, if they persecute me. I'm going to do your business regardless. I'm going to trust you with the end Amen. result. Amen. Amen. Offense comes when you make it your business. But it ain't my business. I'm making it my business. Better not. I'll give you another example. Job said, Job said, Though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. I want you to think about that, that phrase for a second. Though that he slay me, who's he slaying them through? Like God came in, in, in manifestation and just started beating. No, no. He was using circumstance. He was using people. He was allowing things to happen. And Job said, in trusting that it's not my business, it's his business. He said, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. You know who didn't trust him? You know who, who made it their own business? And you, and you can see it? Job's wife. Job said, curse God. And Job's wife said, curse God and die. Do you still hold on to your integrity? Curse God and die. What, what happened there? She made it her business. And she, she forgot to, to continue trusting in God. And we do that, church. I've done it. Got offended. Got my feelings hurt. Got, got, because it was, well, how are you going to let this happen to me, Lord? Have you ever, no, you haven't said that? How are you going to let this happen to me, God? Again? This happened again? I got another ticket. Quit speeding. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm short on my bills again, Lord. Quit wasting money. I see all the Amazon boxes at your hands. <laughs> I'm getting to your Kool-Aid. Let me go and step back. But we... Job had the right heart. I want, I want you to think about it. Job had the right spirit. He lost everything. Everything was crumbling around him. And he said, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. And his wife, he's sitting on a, on a, on a pile of ash heap 
of a piece of pot shedding his boils because he got sick too and he was scraping all his wounds. Ugh. All pussy. And she's like, look at you. Curse God and die. And he was like, though he's slain, he yet shall not trust him. Right? Perfect evidence that she made it her business. And Job said, it's his business. He'll handle it. I might not like the way he handles it, but he'll go handle it. And, the end, and let me give you some good news. The end result of Job, he got doubled at everything that he lost. Amen. Amen. We got to trust the church. We got to trust God with this business. Right? If, if we trust God with this business and we put everything in his hands, we won't get that spirit of Job's life. Hmm, curse God and die. Right? Job had a lot of patience. I couldn't beat me. I took that shoulder. Do you wait for me? We just up and celebrated 28 years yesterday. Uh, it's, it's very possible I have thrown a vase or two. Just saying. I don't think she's ever said curse time and die. I'm not, I'm not afraid to know she hasn't. But we have our weaknesses, church. And, and, and the word of the Lord, when it comes to us, and when he shows us scripture and he shines that light and he exposes our sin or exposes our, our dross and the impurities in our heart or in our mind, or when, when he shows us the mirror of the word of God and you see it, you go, I thought I looked like Jesus, but I actually look like myself a whole lot. Ew, right? I'm looking like me. I want to look like Jesus. When the world sees me, I want to look like Jesus. When the world hurts me, I still want to look like Jesus. When somebody offends me, I still want to look like Jesus. When somebody just comes after me, persecutes me, mistreats me, does all that slap me in the face, I still want to look like Jesus. But too many times we get off, we let our business get in his business and we taint the business. We're not about our father's business. Or if we are about our father's business, we're like, we're about our father's business and then putting our own two cents in there and I, you know, you know what I'm talking about? You ever been uh, one of those businesses that are like, man, they're selling, I don't know, plates, and then all of a sudden at the end of the row you see chunk clouds, you're like, somebody's trying to make some extra money. There's some flip flops over here, you got brisket plates. What's, what's. <laughs> you're putting your flip flops in there, and guys, like, I've been selling brisket plates. What are you doing? I'm just trying to make some extra money, God. You're getting your business in his business. Amen. You know? And in, in, in the verse, uh, so so here's a question for you. Who, whose business are you about? Are you about your father's business? Or about your own? And in verse 34, in John chapter 8, it says that Jesus answers, Verily, verily, I say to them, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. Hmm. We're talking about sons. And he speaks to them about sin. And then he says, the servant will eventually leave the house. Y'all see that? Third, verse 35, and the servant abideth not in the house forever. See, when you, when, when you have the word of God being presented to you constantly, 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 if you will not submit and surrender that servant mentality, to sin and repent of your sins, you will abide in the house forever. You'll leave. It's uncomfortable if you want to stay there. It's just, uh, if you've ever been in a church and you're squirmy, right? Like, all you've got to do is confess, repent, and the squirminess runs right out the door. Amen. Amen? Because in the same scripture, he said, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And if you want to be free this morning, if there's something that's on you that's, that's been agonizing you and frustrating you, but you want to be free, you can be. Amen. If you leave this morning and you're not free, it's because you wanted to keep it. Amen. See, anything that you hold on to, you get white knuckled about it. And God just says, just hold it like this. Everything that He gives us, everything that you have, good or bad, if you just have your hand like this and say, Lord, I'm a, I'm a steward 
You gave this to me. I'm going to take care of it. And if it's, a, if it's a thorn in my side, take it. But though you slay me, yet shall I serve you. It won't hurt that much when he comes and tries to take it out of you if you just hold it like that. But if you've got to pry your fingers open, it's on you. You could hold it on to it too tight. Right? Are you holding on to anything too tight this morning? But it says if you commit sin, you're a servant of sin. A servant will eventually leave the house and not abide in the home forever because they want to hold on to it. That's why. But here's the good news. If you want to be a son, if you want to be a daughter, all you got to do is come to God in repentance to be made free. Not stay in your excuses, not stay in your anger, not stay in your bitterness, your hatred, your stubbornness, and your rebellion. You don't have to stay there, church. You can choose you this day. That song says today is the day. Amen. Today's the day of salvation. And, and, and yes, that ultimately means like giving your life to God, but, but it's what it also means. Today is the day that you can be free from that. We had one sister, and I won't expose her, but we had one sister on Friday night's Bible study said, I want to be free of this. Right. Well, I was done. Amen. She just said, I'm done with it. Threw it out there. Amen. Right? And the Lord moved. Amen. And, and, and although, although it's a struggle sometimes, and although that we're trying to get our flesh under subjection, guess what? When you declare so, I, whom the Son sets free is free indeed, whew, when the Lord just has control of you, surrender to Him, He can make you free of whatever the issue is. Amen. Amen. Right? You don't have to stay in the midst of the end. You don't have to stay in sin. You don't have to stay unhappy. Right? I'm not encouraging you. It does not mean you leave your unhappy situation. It's not just about your happiness. Happiness has depends on your happenings. You need to look for the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And if things can happen around you. And, the, and when you have the joy of the Lord, you can say, though he slay me, yet shall I serve him. Amen. Right? You don't have to always be good and, and go good. And you can say, okay, Lord, I trust you. But do you trust the Lord this morning? Amen. But here's the awesome thing is you can go from servant to son. It just takes repentance. A servant won't abide in the house forever, but a son will stay there forever according to the scripture. Yeah. You just have to come to repentance. It's that easy. It's, 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 that's all God is saying. And say, hey, I'm going to show you something in the mirror. Cain, Cain was offended because of his offering. And it just said that Abel brought a more excellent sacrifice. And God said, if you, did, if, if you bring an excellent sacrifice, will you not be honored for it too? I'm just showing you that you could be better. That you could have a more excellent sacrifice. I'm just showing you where, where you're coming short. This is what the Lord was telling Cain. And Cain got offended and killed his brother so many times. When you're corrected by the Lord, you get a brother killing spirit on you. Instead of saying, you know what, Lord? You're right. I need to change my outlook. I need to change my sacrifice. I need to change my, 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 what I'm bringing to the altar. He didn't, he didn't say, I don't like you. He just said, Abel brought a more excellent sacrifice. And sometimes he's just telling you, hey, just you, you're doing good. Just tweak what you got. Just tweak it just a little bit because there's more. I can give you more. I can do more in your life. I can, I can, I can elevate you more. I can, I can put you here. I can promote you here if you'll just submit and surrender to God. Because that's what God wants. I'm not willing that anyone should perish. Amen? Amen. A, son, a slave can be a son. Verse 36 says, And if the son shall therefore make you free, you shall be free indeed. I'm free. Yes. I'm free. I'm going to declare it. Even, even, if, even if I feel a weight, I feel that weight still. I'm free. I'm declaring it right now. I'll speak those things that are not as though they were because why I have faith and I put my trust in God that He's going to make me free. I'm going to put Him in. I'm putting my business in His business so He can take care of my business. I don't know if that makes sense. But I have a question for you. Verse 37 says, uh, where am I? I know that you are, 
I know that you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Does your word, was the, does the word of God have place? Do you have a place for it? Do, do you have a space for it? I don't know why, but I pictured Brother brother Adrian up here with a shirt that looked like a puzzle and me with a puzzle piece for him. You know, you remember that old, like the trying to put this round peg in a square hole type thing? Do you have space for the Word of God? Or do you have your pre-cut shape? This is how it needs to fit in me or else it can't fit. Mm. Right? Sometimes we make that, that shape our own shape and the Lord's going to Hey, uh, make some space. I need, I need. You're like, no, if they don't fit there, I don't want them. Come on, church. That's for free. I didn't even write that in. <laughs> See, everyone says with their mouth, yes, but their actions say something different. His word says forgive, but sometimes that place has no, that word has no place in you. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it, if you take that scripture, he says, but my word hath no place in you. When he tells you, forgive them, and you just got offended, you're like, hold on, Lord, let me slap them first. Right? <laughs> and you'll forgive me. I know you'll forgive me. You said you'll forgive me, but you're going to you know. <laughs> his, his word has no place in you. You won't let it land. You won't let it fit. When he says, um, I mean, you, you fill in the blank. When he tells you to do something and you say no, you, his word has no place in you. You've chosen to, to shut it out. You've chosen to, to only give him so much space to get in through. And, that, and when his word comes, it bounces off because you're still offended, you won't forgive, or you're still hurt. Right? He said, love your enemies. Oh, ouch. I don't want that one, Lord. Right? Love your, how, many, how many know it's hard to love your enemies? If you got a lot of enemies, just a thought. Take a look in the mirror, too. But anyway, he said, love your enemies. Love them the way he loves you. He says, forgive them, right? Do you forgive your enemies and those that have hurt you the way he forgave you? It's hard sometimes, church, because we want to put uh, caveats on it. We want to put conditions on it. We want to put, well, I'll forgive them, but they better not do it to me again. Right? And, and, and you mess up and you're like, Lord, forgive me. It's the 150th time I did it. And he's like, I forgive you. Like that. Unconditional. He loves you that much, church. But sometimes we take his business with our business. And the Lord's saying this morning, when I, when I speak to you a word, when I give you a word, let it fit. Give place to it. So that when I say to forgive and I say to love your enemy, whether it's convenient for you or not, you do it. Because it's his business, not mine. It's my father's business. Amen? Amen. Abraham is the father of faith. He was a picture of obedience. He was willing to put his son on an altar because God asked for it. And he trusted God and believed for the promise. Can God ask you for anything? Will you resist the Lord this morning? Amen. Verse 40 says, But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Abraham walked in obedience. Abraham did God's will, but not his own. Abraham left Earl, Earl of Chaldees. Abraham left for a land that he had never seen before and went in the direction the Lord pointed him to without specifics like, you know, walk 10 miles and then turn left. He, he didn't get that. He just had to walk by faith. Sons, hear truth. Daughters of the Lord, hear the truth. 
He told them in verse 41 through 43 that your, these are your father's deeds. You do the deeds of your father. And they said unto him, we are not born of fornication. They started mocking Jesus. Basically insulting him saying, we know that your, your mama got pregnant before wedlock. We are not born of fornication. So they started insulting. They started throwing spears. We have one father, even God. And go to verse 44, and I'm, I'm about to come to a close. He said, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of, of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because the, there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's the devil's business. I want you to see it. It's to steal, kill, and destroy, right? So in verse, verse 44, he says, You are of your father the devil. The lust of your father you will do. So there's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's, that's stealing. That's the, that's the stealing part right there. Lust of the eye, trying to take out. Lust of the flesh, the pride of life. That's trying to steal from you. And here, here's the thing about it is, this is the devil's business. My father's business, the devil came to steal, but the Lord asked you to give. Do y'all see that? The, the, the devil will tell you to steal away from that person, to, to steal away from, from, to take your love away from that person, to steal away from, uh, from their forgiveness, to not give them forgiveness, to steal it. God gave it to them. And you want to steal it and keep them accountable because you haven't forgave them. God's saying, give. Give. The enemy wants to steal. He's telling you to give. And then he said, he was a murderer from the beginning. Steal, kill. To kill. Amen? So I want you to think of, of every situation that you've ever dealt with. Is Are you killing the things of God? Are you killing people with your mouth? Are you killing people with your words? The Bible says if you hate your brother, you're guilty of murder. Right. Guilty of murder just by your words. Right? So the enemy comes to kill. But Jesus said, speak life. Power of life and death is in the tongue. So we're supposed to speak life even over our enemies. Pray for those that curse you, it says. Ooh, that's a hard one, right? They just curse me out. Lord, bless them. Right? Not Lord, bless them. Not like that. <laughs> but, but, but for real, like, curse those that, I mean, sorry. <laughs> bless those that curse you. Woo! Bless those that curse you. Bless them. Like, true Lord, I know that they just gave me the bird. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Give them abundance of peace and joy. I don't know what they're going through. You just start speaking. The things that you want in your life, I pray blessing over them, favor over them. That whatever frustrating day would end, that they would just have joy unspeakable. That's blessing them. Right? right? That's speaking life instead of death. Because you know you want to like, Ch -ch -ch what? <laughs> say something. You, you just want to say something. You're supposed to speak life. You're supposed to bring life and not bring death to a situation. Right. Are you bringing life or death? Are you about your father's business or, or the enemy's business? Are you about your father's business or your own business? And then, so, steal, kill, and destroy. Destroy falls under the lies. He also says in, in that portion of Scripture that he's the father of lies. He is a liar. And those lies destroy things the Bible says to bring every thought into captivity. If he lies to you and says, you're not worthy, he says, the pastor don't like you. He says, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, they have something to get you. They didn't even shake your hand this morning. The devil is a liar. Church, right? I, 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 at times I'm going home and the enemy's speaking in my head. You stayed at the pulpit looking at your scripture, making sure that you had it all in, you know, all in there, and then you didn't even greet anybody, and they're just going to be like... Thinks he's too good. I'm like, shut up, daddy. Oh, I'm busy. And the church loves me, so sure. But, uh, but how, how many know we go through that? Right? They greeted everybody but me. 
Well, they kept chasing you around the whole church. <laughs> and somebody came and stood on the hey, and, and they're like, oh, I want to know. And then hey, and then, uh, and then, then all of a sudden, the pastor starts, and I got to sit down. <laughs> it ain't, it ain't hard feelings. Right? The devil is a liar. Yeah. And, and so scripture says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, to take every thought into captivity. That thought, it might be true, they might not like you. Guess what? Go ahead and take that thought. So I don't care, devil. I speak life. I speak life. I speak blessing. Lord bless them. If they don't like me, get a hold of their terrible heart, heart from just blessing. No. Amen. <laughs> Whose business are you doing? Church, let's look in the mirror of God's word this morning and God and, 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 and let them see who, who, who you're reflecting. And if God has shown you anything this morning, if God has manifested anything, if God has put a spotlight, I wanted to get one of those spotlights that we use for deer hunting just this morning. You don't turn off the lights. You got a spotlight in your sin and you're like, Ooh. <laughs> But if God spotlights it when the word is going forth, you get conviction. Don't let the enemy talk you out of it. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yeah, I have been feeling like that. Can't stand that person. I don't know why. They got on my nerves like last week, like yesterday. They got on my nerves this morning. That's right. That's right. They didn't get ready to talk. Whatever. Yeah. They're late again. I'm listening. But if the Lord highlights it, don't be a servant to sin. Become a son and say, Lord, you're right. I repent. Forgive me, God. I made it my business. And this is all yours. I made it my business. And I got hurt. I made it my business and I got offended. I made it my business and I wanted to kill, to steal, or destroy that person. I wanted to make it my business and I wanted to kill, steal, or destroy that atmosphere or that this or that. Y'all see where I'm getting at? Sometimes we get our business tainted and, and we, we step outside the will of God and, and we let our own thoughts and our own desires and our own intentions jump right in front of what God's doing. Let God do what he's going to do. David responded when that guy threw a rock at him and he said, if the Lord allowed it, let him throw it. I will say this, I don't know why he did it, but he said, if on his deathbed, he said, by the way, remember that guy in the store and I said, go ahead and kill him. I don't I guess he still held on to it, you know, Lord forgive me. I'm going to ask him about that when we get to heaven. Amen. Anyway, sorry. Went on a rabbit trail. But church, come on, let's go from servants of sin to sons of God. And be about our Father's business. Amen. Okay? Let's stand. Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord God, and forgive us, Lord, for making it our own thing. For making it about us, for making, for, for being concerned about things that we should not be concerned about, for getting offended over things that are your business, Father. Lord, we place every single situation, every single hurt, every single offense, every single sin, we place it at the feet of, of your cross, Father. And we ask you just to take it, Lord. I want to be about my Father's business. I don't want to be about my own anymore, Lord God. And I ask you to forgive me. I know I've come short. I know I've tainted your business at times, and I ask you, Father, forgive me. And if I've made, if I've made anything bad, or made anybody worse, or I've made anybody step away from your cross, or step away from the altar, or step away from church, forgive me, Father, and give them healing, because I, I, I don't want that, Lord. Lord, I want, I want, I want, Lord Jesus, to you to use me in your business. And that my mind be your mind, and my heart be your heart, and I be your hands, and I be your feet, Father. Fill me with your spirit, Lord God, and lead me, Lord God. Let there be less of me and more of you. In Jesus' name, come on, let's, if there's some things that you've got to put at the altar, if there's some things that you've got to put at his feet this morning, let's go ahead and do that.